Welcome to the beautiful city of Kyoto. We're Helen and Tim, full-time adventure travelers with the goal to see the world one mountain at a time. In January 2023, we packed up our home in Portland, Oregon and set off on a journey of full-time travel. We're currently exploring Japan, our third country in this around-the-world journey. After showing you around Osaka in our last video, we're now going to take you around Kyoto to explore the historic streets, rent kimonos, go to a geisha tea ceremony, and see mountaintop temples. From there, we head to see the stunning Mount Fuji, the tallest peak in Japan, and get in some hiking time. We are in Kyoto, hotel number two. Still small, about the same size as our one in Osaka. It's our awesome little view. Love all the traditional homes. I haven't seen the bathroom yet, so let's check it out. Oh, that's actually really spacious. A little bigger than last time. Control panel. But this time we have a walk-in shower. Wow luxurious for <laughs> or the size for Japan. So we made it to Kyoto. The city is more of our speed so far. It's definitely a bit more relaxing than the hustling bustle of Osaka. It has a population of over 1.5 million people and it's definitely kept its old world Japanese charm and we are currently exploring the Kyoto Gardens today. The Kyoto Gardens that kind of surround the Imperial Palace. But we're excited to just see what is in store for us in Kyoto. We're going to be checking out a geisha tea ceremony today and then we also have a cooking class planned as well. Before the tea ceremony, we're gonna actually go and get dressed in traditional kimonos, see how they make matcha tea. So we were at the Kyoto Imperial Palace today. It was a home and residence to the Japanese emperors up until 1869. A lot of history here. There's free walking tours and it's completely free. So, you know, we like free. There are a few different grounds that you can walk when you're here and you definitely need a couple hours to explore this area. And what I'm the most, I guess, fascinated by is that a lot of these temples and palaces have been burned down. They've gone through the tests of time. They keep rebuilding them even after fires, rebuilding them after wars. And it's just very cool to see all of the different ornate structures and the designs of these palaces and temples that are preserved for all of these years to come. It's going to get busy because it has the traditional streets that everyone wants to get the, the kind of the famous shots down the, the street. One of our favorite things to do in Kyoto was walk around the historic and iconic streets of Ninenzaka and Sanenzaka. You can walk among sloping roads filled with stone steps and the streets are lined with traditional wooden storefronts. And walking through the streets you get an idea of what Kyoto looked like in the past. Kyoto was once the capital city of Japan for more than a thousand years from 794 to 1868 AD. It was founded by one of Japan's earliest emperors and the capital city of Kyoto once surrounded the Kyoto's imperial palace. And in Japanese, Kyoto literally translates to capital city. And it has over 3,000 temples and shrines sprinkled all throughout the city. So we are trying the Uji Matcha Teramisu. Apparently it's a staple here in Japan and I've been seeing it everywhere online so I definitely wanted to give it a try. And it's almost like the Jiggly Cheesecake but Jiggly <laughs> Matcha Teramisu. Tastes like matcha. Cool whip but like a light cream, fluffy cream. And there's some kind of a matcha cake at the bottom. Check out our YouTube description for a link to our Google Maps that has planning ideas for things to do in Kyoto and throughout Japan. You'll even maybe find a cute Totoro shop along the way. So we're currently on our way to pick up our kimonos. Then we're gonna walk around the city. Tim is very excited to be in his kimono. Probably not really. I'm excited to just have some Japanese tradition or be amongst the Japanese tradition and to learn more about it. Let's go. <laughs> So the first step is getting these socks on, these special socks. So we just picked up our kimonos here before our tea ceremony. We're gonna walk around and take pictures. The process was very easy. The kimono on us, we got to pick out what color we wanted. We put on this white shirt first, picked out a kimono, 
they did a series of folds, then put these different sashes on, and then fixed our hair. Look how beautiful it is. But yeah, it was a really neat experience. They were just so very kind and gracious and very excited for the tea ceremony and the geisha so. We're excited to take you along for the ride and get little bits of footage. So I'm walking very slow because my sandals are very slippery. They're like almost like a silk material. It's really cool to be able to finally do this. Tim looks very ravishing. Is it uncomfortable to walk in? Feels like I'm walking on wood planks, but it's all right. I I'm kind of glad we didn't get these earlier because it would have been a struggle. It's certainly not as comfortable as my Tevas. No. Yeah, I'm digging it. I think I might get one for home. I got a rock in my sandal. <laughs> first tea ceremonies in Japan were practiced during the Kamakura period. Essentially it is around 1100 to 1300s where they began to have these tea ceremonies with matcha green tea. The reason why they started these practices and these rituals for tea drinking is because the Zen monks in Zen Buddhism were trying to stay awake during their long meditations. Drinking this tea kept them awake during those long practices of meditation. Our geisha tea ceremony was about 45 minutes long and cost around 35,000 Japanese yen or $250 USD for two people, which included a kimono rental. During the tea ceremony, we had a question and answer session with the geisha. The geisha also performed a lovely dance and we had a tea ceremony, which we made our own matcha tea and we were provided sweet treats. Geishas are highly respected hosts who have learned the arts of dance, playing instruments, elaborate tea preparation, and hosting professional gatherings. So today we're in the Nishiki Market, and it is very busy because it's been raining all day. Luckily the market is covered, so everyone is here. It's fresh and mochi all along the way. And this everywhere in Japan. Sugar, right? And everywhere in Japan. This is a brown sugar mochi. Mm. It almost tastes like chocolatey. Oh, it's like a red bean mixed with the brown sugar. That's where I got confused. I wasn't expecting red bean on the inside. Takoyaki balls are a Japanese staple. They're essentially like a dough ball with some different ingredients. The main ingredients mm. is octopus, right? And they essentially put, put different toppings. But today we are headed to the Fushimi Unari Shrine. We are going to see the famous Tori Gate hike. Essentially it sits at the base of a mountain. At the back of the shrine that's where you find the thousand Tories and this hike is the top of my list here at uh, in Kyoto. So we came really early this morning. We wanted to get here even earlier but we're here about 7 30 in the morning trying to beat the crowds. So far it looks all right. The Fushimi Inari Shrine is an important temple here in southern Kyoto. It is actually dedicated to the Shinto god of rice, Inari, and there's said to be thousands of temples around Japan that are dedicated in honoring Inari. And as you can see around the property, there are foxes lined, statues all throughout the temple grounds, and apparently the foxes signified as messengers for Inari. So. They're not only cute, but they definitely serve a purpose. The Tori gates are located just behind the main shrine. So far, this shrine is one of my favorite in Kyoto. It's definitely one of the prettiest. So it was pretty incredible. We just got the entire entrance to ourselves. If you just let people walk past, we might get a little gap to get some photos and to also just enjoy the serene and quietness of this place. So many of you might not know that the Tori has a pretty large significance to myself because when I was in the military, I served in a unit that was called the Rakasans and our unit emblem was the Tori. And that was basically dating back to World War II when they were doing an airborne operation where they jumped out of planes and were parachuting towards the ground. So uh, a Tory actually means a gateway to honor. I love seeing all these red Tories. Kind of takes me back. So it's kind of a, a neat little fact. Hey, you're you caught up. Back. I was distracted by all the Tories and all the beautiful photos that people are taking and trying not to be in the way.
It's a beautiful shrine. These orangish red tories are set right into the mountain. So as we're, they kind of wind through the mountain, we're listening to the rippling creek uh, flowing next to us. You got the birds chirping. And now we're finally starting to ascend up into the mountain towards the summit. The gates are getting more sparse as we go along, but this is just wonderful. As you can see on the back of the tour, there's an inscription. So individuals and companies donate money between 400,000 to 1 million yen to essentially get their name and also the size of the tori. So the more you donate, the bigger the tori. And it's kind of interesting to see all of the different donors along the way. The Fushimi Inari Shrine is located within Mount Inari, which stands at 764 feet or 233 meters above sea level. This area is open 24 hours to the public and free to visit. That was erratic. <laughs> So we're at the Yatsusuji, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, intersection. You'll see great views of Kyoto from this viewing platform. Apparently from here, it splits off into the more circular route, so the upper portion of the trail that goes up on the mountain. I can definitely see it ascending just ahead of me. So if you, a lot of people tend to turn around here. If you wanna keep going up a little higher, there's less people that actually hike up this portion and there's still more tories to be seen. So it appears that some of the restaurants are open early. And uh, this is a really cute spot because there's this nice creek flowing down nearby. Great little spot to grab a bite to eat. So we just picked up some of these green tea jellies mm -hmm. from one of the local vendors. They're actually really good. They're not overpowering with the green tea flavor. Um, slightly sweet, nice little trail snack. We've reached the top. So you know Tim and I love to do free activities and I would say this is probably one of the number one free Japan activities we've done so far. We not only get a workout, but you see this beautiful temple and all of these tories. We highly recommend coming here and definitely come in early to beat the crowds. As you can see, there's a lot bigger crowd now. It's uh, about 9.30, a little bit harder to grab a picture. That was so cool. And I don't know, I'm kind of speechless because I feel like there's not many places in the world that take your breath away, but honestly, this one did. So the entire hike took about an hour, 45 minutes for us. It was somewhere around three miles. And I feel like it took that long because we stopped so many times. I bet if you just go straight through, you could probably finish the hike in about an hour and 15 minutes or an hour, hour to an hour 30. So, I mean, you have to stop along the way. There's just so many little nicks and crannies that really different aesthetics and meaning and all the tea houses sprinkled along the way. Take your time. And we highly recommend coming here. I feel like a lot of places have been just super busy everywhere, but also it's not golden week anymore so that definitely makes a difference the base of the shrine there's all these little food tents these little food vendors so we're just picking up a, a snack after our hike we're making the filling for our kyoza <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. 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 The, the yes, the mince meat. Yeah. yeah. It's tasty, but the mince meat. Yeah. It's like this. Just, mm. oh, just, just this side. Top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One side, please. Mm -hmm. Make a print and press. Okay. So, make a <laughs> Fish meat and bone yeah. It takes just two minutes, three minutes, very good. Mm -hmm. We wanted to experience the local culture and cuisine, so we took a ramen gyoza cooking class from a Kyoto local. We enjoyed Sukiko's two-hour class that we booked on airkitchen.me. She provided great step-by-step -step instructions with ingredients lists to make the gyoza, showed us how to make dashi, a ramen base and broth, and to create a delicious ramen dish from start to finish. We aren't vegans, but we loved our vegan ramen and gyoza cooking class, and we definitely highly recommend it, and we'll drop the link in our YouTube description. Mount Kurama is a mountain to the far north of Kyoto. It is a one-hour train ride to Kurama Station. We visited Kurama Dera Temple, and it was a pleasant surprise and an unexpected stop. We wanted to see more of the mountains in the surrounding Kyoto area, so this was definitely the perfect place for us to visit. You can explore this historic Buddhist temple set on a mountainside accessible via cable car or by going up hundreds of steps. We enjoyed how quiet it was, and the temple was surrounded by beautiful old-growth forests. We opted to take the cable car up and then walk down. Ramadera Temple is open 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily, but make sure to check the website for the most updated open times. The temple has an entrance donation of 500 yen or $3.50 USD, and the cable car costs 200 yen one way or $1.50 USD. So we are in the northern part, just outside of Kyoto City. We got away from the city, but this is even quieter. We highly recommend escaping the city. We had to take a couple trains and now we're, we might be getting aboard a cable car. We are in the Mount Karama area and it is a sacred area that has a Buddhist temple. So earlier we are at a Shinto temple, which is a more indigenous religion. Now we are at the Buddhist temple checking things out. So the Kurama Dera temple here dates back to about the year of 770. So Mount Kurama is actually said to be the birthplace of Reiki, a type of energy therapy practiced in many, many parts of the world. Don't know how true that is, but you can only <laughs> believe so much you read on the internet, but that'd be pretty cool if it was actually born in this place. So on our train ride out here, we started noticing these long-nosed Japanese creatures. They were actually on the train, and then when we were walking around the temple, they're kind of spread out throughout the temple, and they're called Tengu. They're part of Japanese folklore, and the these creatures, and they hold the power of the mountains, and they were rumored to live within the mountains here. There are hiking trails beyond the main temple you can explore. There are also viewing decks along the way. Though there aren't many views near the top, it is still very peaceful, so make sure you bring your lunch and hang out for a while. So while we were in the temple, we made an offering and a prayer. So you may be asking, how did we find this wonderful temple? Um, I just so happened to be on Google Maps, and like I normally do, I search around the cities that we're going to be staying in because I know that after a few days being in the city it's just too much you know with all the people all the traffic that kind of thing so we need to get out to nature you know do some hiking maybe and uh, so I was just searching Google Maps uh, all around Kyoto and I just happened upon this one mountain and it's a huge contrast to the last temple that we were at today it's so peaceful out here no foreigners except for us. Um, it's just, it's really nice. We're finishing the day off by exploring the trails here in the upper temple. So for lunch today, we're at a traditional Japanese tatame restaurant. It looks amazing. The train ride from Kyoto to Lake Kawaguchi where we stayed in Mount Fuji took around 5 hours on the Shinkansen high-speed train. 
Transportation in Japan is quite costly. The Shinkansen train tickets alone cost us 14,000 Japanese yen or $100 USD per person. So our hotel has a series of private saunas, which is amazing. You can actually just come in here and a light turns on that it's in use. There's also a public sauna, but they're all different in some way. There's a stone bath. The light indicates it's in use. Very awesome. This is what the baths look like. Can you move phone a little bit? Well, at least in Japan, they have these things called on onsens. Are they called onsens? Yeah. Onsens. Essentially, it's a soaking tub. Mm -hmm. It's and a traditional Japanese like, purification, relaxation, meditation. And they usually have public ones, but at our hotel, we have both public and private. Of course, we can't get video in the public because yeah. you don't go in with your clothes because on. Because they're fully nude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is one where you get ready. You have to take a shower first. You bathe yourself. You bathe yourself. And then there's a private soaking tub. Got hotel number three in Japan. We are in the uh, Tofunchi area. We made it from Kyoto today. And check out this spectacular view of our patio. How was your first cab ride experience? An um, annoyingly expensive. It was expensive. <laughs> it was quick and it was a very nice <laughs> vehicle. $24. Yeah. To go 10 minutes. Yeah, Never doing nice. that again. It's probably about 10 minutes. Out of our budget. <laughs> The Chureto Pagoda is a five-story iconic red pagoda sitting on a hilltop facing Mount Fuji. The panoramic views are incredible. It is a very popular area during Japan's cherry blossom season that runs March to April. You can reach the pagoda by climbing 398 long and tedious steps, but the walk up is definitely worth it. We went just before sunset around 4.30 p.m., which was mid-spring at the end of May, and there were already a lot of people there waiting around a couple of hours before sunset. Finally doing some good hiking, not good hiking, but just sun hiking just in general. We're gonna have some amazing views, obviously, the beautiful volcano behind us. So I'm excited to get out in the mountains. I'm gonna try to go rent a bike now. Gonna probably have to go ride it in the dark. So you can pick up some dinner tonight. Since we blew our whole budget on our taxi ride, we're gonna go eat at 7 <laughs> Right, honey? Probably. Yeah. Probably or the grocery store. Pick up some bike rentals. Got our bikes. Got our bikes rented. We got food. food. Noodles next door. Mm. Yakasoba noodles. About to embark on our biking adventure. Gotta get some fuel first. Tim, best grocery store view ever. <laughs> Made it to our back to our hotel. It's about 30 minute bike ride from town. Oh, tired. Ready for dinner. Got dinner at the grocery store. My box of goods. So unfortunately, Mount Fuji, the Mount Fuji climbing season at least, is closed and it's only open, I think, July through September. Well, we're here in May. So the alternative option is to find a climb that's close to our hotel. So this mountain, Mount Kurataki, is right behind our hotel. It sits at like 5,800 feet of elevation. It's gonna give us great views of Mount Fuji at least. So, you know, we wanna get out and just have a nice hike. This is close and nearby. Came to this area, obviously, to see the tallest peak in, in Japan, Mount Fuji. Feeling tired today. Sometimes full-time travel can definitely wear down on you. Today's one of those days where things just feel tough and I think it comes in waves where you're like oh I miss these things and I want these things but you know the grass is always greener just thankful to be out in nature and hiking and it's like the first 15-20 minutes was very very steep definitely a very slow climb but flattens out a little bit but I'm sure it'll start going back up Definitely a very roadless travel trail. It's pretty wide, pretty clear. Definitely seems like one of those trails that only locals take, which is nice. So hopefully 
can find a bit of solitude if you decide to come on this hike in the Mount Fuji area. Very short. That's what his life is, very short. But yay. Take the rope up. Whew, it's a lot steeper than Alex. Behind me is the beautiful Mount Fuji. And as Tim mentioned earlier, it is the tallest mountain in Japan. Mount Fuji is an active volcano. There's about three calderas on the mountain and it's divided into stations. There's 10 total and above station five is the halfway point. Mount Fuji stands at over 12,388 feet tall. So it's about 37, 76 meters. And an interesting fact about Mount Fuji is that it is actually not publicly owned above a certain um, elevation. elevation. And that elevation I believe is above 11,000 feet. I think it's either a company or a individual that owns a series of over a thousand temples across Japan, including the ones on Mount Fuji. There are quite a few temples on the mountain itself, especially above um, the 10,000 feet mark. So that's something very interesting. Most mountains you see in around the world are definitely government property, public lands, but definitely not Mount Fuji. Kurataki is the tallest peak in the ridgeline that is to the north of Mount Fuji. It's not foggy up here. It's not foggy. It's a. It's not foggy. Yeah. However, we can't really see anything from the the actual summit. So we're gonna head back down a little bit to a viewpoint and uh, get some great shots. We stayed in the northern part of Mount Fuji in the Fuji Five Lakes region, specifically near the Lake Kawaguchi area. Lake Kawaguchi offers the most things to do and see. We love renting bikes to ride around and travel around the area, and it also provides one of the best areas to view Mount Fuji. So I've been wanting to see some sakuras, especially in Japan. We saw them in Taiwan, but look, we found some. Looks like the spring blooms are finally coming out. So I'm sure if you wait a few more weeks, you'll probably see a lot of beautiful, beautiful sakuras and other stunning plants up here. We are in Mount Fuji. So we are checking off one of the places that we've always wanted to see in this entire world, visiting Japan. Check out that view. Check it out. Definitely the best hiking views you will get. Panoramic views of the lakes and the mountain. This lakes district around Mount Fuji is beautiful. Highly recommend coming to this area if you are in Japan. So there are five lakes surrounding the entire mountain and they all have very unique names that I will not try to pronounce. Our snack for the day. Found these soy joys find them back in the states but they have the matcha flavor they have matcha flavored everything right mm -hmm. sausage hot dog and bread it's like sausage with some kind of mayo mm -hmm. they love their yep. mayo here mm -hmm. they put mayo on everything on a lot of stuff yeah we had mayo with soba noodles last night so we're on the back side of mount kiradaki sorry i keep swatting my face because there's always flies and so much stuff. But anyways, we're on the backside going down the loop back to our hotel on Mount Kiridaki. And it's interesting because now we're seeing these different things along the way. There's a shrine up here on the mountain as well as an old bathroom. And then now we found a shelter. You know, somebody was making money having a mountain lodge here. And who, who knows if, you know, business went, went away or they died or who knows. This is sad that it's kind of a shame. Mm -hmm. Now down the mountain we go. Down we go. Bird's nest. Looks like it's made of moss. Found another little little statue. Looks like we are almost back down to the road. So we actually maybe came up this one and then over and then down. So while Tim's doing that, I feel like that was a pretty good trail. I would definitely recommend it if you're in this area and looking for a hike and you don't want to do Fuji or Fuji is closed or off season. I think I would give it about a seven and a half just because maybe a few points off 
glad that we did the loop versus the out and back because one, we never like seeing the same scenery and two, going down that steep section would be miserable, right, honey? What she said. Due to the switchback, not switchbacks, but the very steep part going up. So what was our total hike time? Uh, four hours and 20 minutes and 3,300 feet of gain, five miles. Mm, not bad, felt a lot longer. Oh, no, 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 we need to go left, oh. sorry. Well, yeah, that look, is, that's, that's the lake. Yeah, that's the Kawaj Kuchiko. Yeah. Hi, puppy bear. So Tim and I were riding bikes and we came across this Japanese fighter plane, likely from the World War II era, yeah? Mm, for sure. Looks like it. Riding through the countryside in the Mount Fuji area. Look how pretty this is. Kind of feel like we're back in Pacific Northwest in the Washington area with the mountains surrounding, maybe like Leavenworth. <laughs> Ringing the bell. Your bell is much better than mine. Mine's this like dinky knob. <laughs> Rode our bikes for a little lunch break. Rose and lavender. I was hoping they had cherry blossom flavor, but they didn't. There's Fuji, but it is behind the clouds today. On our third and final day here, Japan has some of the kindest and most patient people we have met so far along our full-time travel journey. We were really impressed by Japan overall for its affordable food costs, free activities like visiting temples and shrines, and the accessibility of transportation all around through trains, buses, and more. We had a great time traveling for two weeks around Japan. We ended our journey in Tokyo, the capital city. We took full advantage of the shopping, restaurants, and the nightlife, especially in the Shinjuku area, a bustling city that is home to one of the busiest train stations and street crossings in the world. Over three million people pass through this area each day. We didn't stay long in Tokyo because we needed to catch our next flight for a one night layover in Bangkok and on to country number four, Italy. So we just boarded our Japan Airlines. We are in premium economy on a 787. So Japan Airlines has one of the best premium economy products that, that are out there basically. So look at all the stuff we got. Thanks for tuning in to our Kyoto and Mount Fuji video. We hope you found some good planning tips for your future travels. Make sure to hit that like button to support this video and channel. Subscribe for future adventures and we'll see you on the next trail.